I, you know, wanted to make this solo record, and um, then I had to think about how I would do it. Since I didn't have a band, I had to figure out what that pathway would be. You see, if you're talking about rock and roll, the first thing that you have to have is a drummer. That's the way albums are, are made, the traditional way, like old school way, and, you know, with the whole band there in the studios. But you've got to get a great drum track. And then you can make that, that opens the door to everything else in a rock and roll album. But I, I have a friend at Sony, um, Jeremy Holiday, and he, he said, how about this guy, Ryan Hoyle? He played with the Collective Soul. You know, he's got a, he's got like a drum studio. He's out in LA, he records drum tracks, and he, maybe you should get in touch with him. Well, of course I went out there and, you know, it's a great place he's got, and, and it was just a joyful thing to cut it. But it did take some time, you know, I had to go out there, I'd do like two tracks, come home, you know, a couple of months later, I'd go out and do some more. That, it went on like that for, that, that. so there's the start of a long time. Along with that, out in LA, he's, I asked him about bass players, and he said, well, I know this guy, Brad Smith. He, you know, used to be with Blind Melon. He played a lot of the great bass stuff for me. Guy Patrick Miller, he was playing some guitar parts for me, but I really didn't know how to produce that, so I, I didn't I didn't get that quite right. So I talked to him about it, and he told me about Stephen Dakutis and a sound spa. There he sits. <laughs> a mutual friend of ours, Adam Small, an excellent musician and bass player, somehow Dave, was corresponding with Adam, I'm not exactly sure how they knew each other, recommended that Dave get in touch with me, help Dave put his record together. He not only has, you know, the production chops and engineering chops, but he can really play. <laughs> Analog glory. After hearing Dave's demos, hearing the voice of Eye of the Tiger coming through my monitors, the process was effortless. And I attribute that to the fact that he and I think exactly alike music. That sound, the punchy, you know, bright, clear, but, but you know, ballsy and all that. Well, working with Dave is is a joy. Producer heaven, man. I mean, just, you know, this record was all creativity. Working with Ryan Hoyle's drum tracks, there was no correction going on. Like, a lot of times when I'm working here, I'm, in, I'm basically spending my time correcting things, tuning things, or whatever. I mean, it was just top to bottom creativity. And Dave and I would start mixing these songs. First thing I would do is pull the bass drum up and Dave and I would look at each other for a half an hour with a smile on our face. Stevie's production, it's, he's got all the tools and every one of these boxes is hooked up and every one of them gets into these records, you know, so um, all, the, all the stuff here, it's, there's some really amazing gear here. People can expect, um, I, I think a, it has a lot of classic rock feel to it, you know, it does, but, but yet it's, it sounds like a modern record to me. The songs on this record are, are, are about stuff that meant, means stuff to me, you know? I mean, they're, uh, and I, 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 I sort of, that's sort of my, my rule with, with songs, is to have them be, you know, not just sort of something made up. Always You. That was actually a song I've had kicking around for a long time, and it, it's, it's about to your, sort of your conscience. Inevitably, it will speak to you and, um, you know, warn you about things you might be contemplating that you shouldn't do, you know, that, that you should treat people right and you know, try to do the right thing. Hope was actually, I wrote, I wrote that song in New York City um, right after 9-11, and that's, that's was my sort of response to an unbelievable act of destruction, you know, for an ideology which is, you know, incomprehensible to me. And so uh, I am a hopeful person, but I think it has a general sort of overall, you know, everyday meaning. Yeah, Kaleidoscope, it's just sort of, it, it was sort of, like I said, that was something my wife, words that my wife wrote, and it's kind of a life, it's about life song, it's, it's kind of like, you know, one of those things of, you know, reflecting on your life, is what it is. I hope you enjoy Dark Light, uh, I did, and the, the best experience recording I've ever had. I love that guy. <laughs>